Welcome to the Pack Clone series of videos. This video is of a technical nature and is intended for technically minded individuals who are interested in programming on the Commodore 64. In the previous video I covered redefining the character set on the Commodore 64. Today's video covers several bug fixes, which I hope will not disappoint some of you. Bear with me, the next video in the series should be a little more exciting since I promised to reveal some more level designs at that time, so stay tuned for that. I am taking bites out of the elephant a little at a time on this project so that it does not become too overwhelming for me. With that, let's get into it. Okay, in this segment I am going to quash some bugs. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of bug fixes that I have gone over, that I have fixed since the last video. The first one has to do with reversing the direction. Um, I had a little algorithm that counted a certain number of moves and then it would reverse the sprites moving movement in order to add a little bit of flexibility, not flexibility, but a little bit of um, randomness to the behavior of the ghosts. It's so similar to what the arcade does. And what that routine does, essentially it swaps the directions. If it was going left, make it go right. If it's going up, make it go back down. And that's what this does. And I covered this in a previous video. But what I found is one of the bugs is when the eyes mode is activated on the ghosts and the ghosts are going back to the cage, to the ghost cage, I really don't want them reversing course. So in order to fix that, I just added a check. Check to see if the eyes mode is on. If it is, go ahead and swap. If it is, if, it, if the eyes mode is on, then skip. Don't do the swap direction. Otherwise, swap the direction. And then do that for all the ghosts. And so I had to add some checks right here. And that was a quick and easy fix for that. I'm not going to demonstrate that in action. It's very difficult to actually demonstrate that to so you have to have it the, just the right moment when they reverse and then you have to also have ghosts going back to the cage at that same time and you have to notice that it doesn't reverse <laughs> so it's really hard to demonstrate that particular bug next up I am going to demonstrate another bug that I came across and in order to do that I'm going to bring up the screen here And the next bug, it has to do with, I'm going to pause it. It has to do with when you complete the level, the screen flashing, where it kind of goes blinka, blinka, you know, it flashes black and white or on and off. When I swapped the character set out in the last video, of course, you know, one step forward, two steps back, I had encountered a bug where by swapping, for example, this character out, um, the background here used to be 160, now it's 227. My algorithm in the past, in the, just before I fixed this, was searching for character 160. And so if it was 160, it would reverse the color. It would change the color, make it flash. But since it's now 227, that part of the program stopped working. So. And uh, I'll show it to you in action here, working. So if I complete the level, you see the flash. Okay. Let me bring that up. Okay, you can see by switching back to the prior version, not a whole lot of change in order to make this in order to fix this problem. But what I what I decided to do was instead of searching for character 160 and reversing the color, I s decided to search for just reverse all the colors regardless of what they are. And, and there's only one example or one case where I don't want that to happen where I just wanted to um, change the, um, the, the character that I wanted to change the color for. And so that's why I've structured the code the way I did. But Anyway, it looked like just two lines of code here changed, one or two lines, and that fixed that problem. So it wasn't a big deal, but 
again, it, it you know those these little problems are all adding up to a lot of a lot of time invested. <laughs> and I'm going go on to bug number three for this segment, which is there is a bug in the transitions. And let me let me demonstrate this one. I can actually show the bug. Now you probably notice this if you're really acutely watching the the transitions. Uh, if you've ever looked at my prior videos, I'm I've been noticing. I just haven't take the time to fix the problem. And I'm going to slow it down. Slow the speed down to 20% in the emulator. And you see how there's some garbage characters showing up right there while it was transitioning. That's the bug that I was trying to fix right here in this part of the segment. So that, I noticed it, it was just going really fast, it was scrolling, but, and when the screen finished drawing it looked good, so I didn't really worry about that problem. But I knew it was one of those I was going to have to go back and revisit, because it, because it just sticks in the back of your mind, you're like, I don't like that, I don't like that, I gotta fix that. So let me show you that. And the prior versions right here. So this one actually reworked quite a bit. The main problem, the main problem what was show, what was causing the garbage to show up down at the bottom was because let me find it right in right here. I this little loop right here was going too far. I had it set to what did I have it set to to stop at E7, which is the the bottom right character on the display. The bottom far right character down here at the bottom right is DB or, or 7E7. So I was like, oh, that's where it should stop. Well, really it needs to stop 40 characters before that and so that's why there was some extra garbage on the screen and so once I changed that to C0 that problem went away however I was still noticing a few artifacts so I decided to change the way this was structured a little and I decided instead of this, uh, moving the screen data first and then the color data I decided to reverse that move the color data first and then the screen data and then near here near the bottom I changed the way this was this is sort of self modifying now before I was using FB and FC and using the indirect reference but now to me this is easier not to, to I've learned I've, <laughs> I've actually uh, I feel like this is easier to do than the indirect reference just to change the value literally of this location plus one for, for the low byte and plus two for the high byte and just store the value there and then then let the LDA command use whatever values you store there. Okay I need to interject right here I noticed after uh, recording that last segment that in CBM when the compiler compiles when you have four zeros when it compiles it only uses two digits and this was turned out to be a bug was probably causing some of the artifacts that I was seeing as well as the other problem um, that I had to fix it, it's the same case for it also applies to when you do the STA command with four zeros it's only using two bytes. So what I what I ended up doing was modifying the code so that it uses instead of four zeros I put in four F's and then when it compiles and then you have it uses three bytes. So that was a bug, or at least in my program. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. To demonstrate that, let's go ahead and run the program. Okay, I'm going to trigger the level transition and let me slow it down. 
Let's do 20%. You see that there's a lot fewer artifacting or garbage or glitching. And let's go back to maximum speed. Let's rerun this. And it looks good. So it transitions a lot better. You don't see any of the garbage characters at the bottom. And the other thing I changed, the other, ch the other change that I made for this was in this, this area of the code, the draw next map. So how that routine transitions, it does it one line at a time. It redraws the bottom, scrolls everything up a character, redraws the bottom character, and it does it 25 times. This is how I had it before, where I'm calling that routine 25 times, and I just hadn't gotten around to writing a routine to call it 25 times in a loop. And so that's what I've done here, down here. So I just loop it 25 times and I save off the value of X because I know this routine changes it. But And then I with a PHA to push it to the stack and then I do a PLA to pull it from the stack and put it back into the X register. And so that runs and redraws the screen. And one of the things I want to show this, I'm going to show this uh, bug when I, every time I add something I always create a bug but when uh, when this runs when this ran the first time I had these backwards the TXA, I had this TAX and this TX, I had these reversed and look what happens when when that happens when, when, when it's backwards and then you complete the level Anyhow, that's what happens when you, <laughs> when it goes on forever, it just kind of loops through all memory on the Commodore 64. It's kind of cool, actually. I was like, wow, hey, this is, what is this? Uh, um, I can make 1942 now. And if you wait long enough, it actually recycles back to the, to the maps, <laughs> which I waited. I waited for that. It, it doesn't take that long, but it cycles back through the maps. So I'm going to hit control Z to put that back. And then finally, by fixing one bug, we introduce another yet again. And I forgot to mention this on the previous bug fix, but on the transitions. When you do transition, when I when I hit the button to transition to the next level, watch the um, characters down here change color and the ch characters up there change color. Oops, I died. So it's doing the whole screen, and I may want to come back and just do what's on the screen. Not the top line and not the bottom line. But not a huge deal. You'll see also, you'll notice that I've designed um, some fruit character. This is the original built-in. This is a fruit. And I got my little packs over here, and I made the diagonal on the ready. So making a little bit of progress here but I have a long way to go I'm trying to quash some bugs before I add any future any new features okay in this segment I am going to talk about how I fixed a particular problem that's been irritating me since day one and in order to demonstrate that let me bring up the program and you see how the ghosts, they start moving right away and the pack just sits there even though there's been no input from the, the user. So that is what I am trying to fix. And I've already implemented the fix in a, in a newer version of the program. And let me demonstrate that. So now the program waits until the user pushes up, down, left, or right. And if I push left, 
pack moves in that direction starting out. So the way I implemented this, the third way I've implemented this, because I've implemented it a couple ways, and I even recorded this segment um, with one implementation and decided I wasn't happy with it, was on the reset level, at the bottom of the reset level, just call a routine to grab a character and save it off. And let me show you that routine. So there's only one call to it in the entire program. And it's kind of in the main program loop area. So this is the main loop where the program runs. But right after um, right after the normal key press, I just put this routine. All it does is check the keyboard for any input. If it finds that the key's been pressed, then jump to check which key was pressed and then save it off. All that does is move this direction, move that direction. It saves it off and stores it in a variable for the user direction, which causes the pack clone to move in that direction. And so it's only called in one place. It's only checked in between level completions or at the beginning of the game. So it turned out to be much easier to fix than I anticipated and um, I overthought it at the beginning but it is done. In addition to what I said at the beginning of this video for the next video I'm also planning on doing a segment on joystick input. At this time I'm not sure if I'm going to allow concurrent input of both keyboard and joystick or just one or the other so stay tuned for that.